Hi there. Um, we're going to learn about solving two-step equations now. Now that you've uh, kind of mastered the one-step equations, I hope, um, we're going to move on to two steps. So really, it's just two in, doing two of the one-step type equations into one equation. All right. Um, so our learning objective, learning target for today, there's my target. It's to solve two-step equations in one variable. We're only dealing with one variable yet. All right, maybe it's x, maybe it's y, maybe it's a, but we're just working with that one variable. So to start you off here, um, let's see here. I'm going to give you, these, these are the steps to solving multi-step equations, really long ones, big ones, pretty much any equations you can find, and we're going to break it up and just use the steps that you need for two-step equations for today. So typically, if there's any place in there that you can use the distributive property, which was from a different section we've done, use the distributive property first. Then if there's any like terms that you can combine anywhere on either side, so on separate sides, of the, um, you can combine them. All right. Then you get into undoing any addition or subtraction. So if you have the x's all on the left side, the x term on the left side, if there's any addition or subtraction you need to get rid of, any numbers added or subtracted, do that first. All right, and then undo the multiplication or division that's the co of the coefficient of that variable. And then finally, if there are any ex exponents on the variable, you can get rid of that by using square roots. That's pretty much pretty much a multi-step equation. You can do, use those steps for pretty much any equations. And I wanted to point out here that Steps three through five, which really are going to be the ones we're dealing with today, here, it's like PEMDAS backwards. So if you go backwards in PEMDAS, which is our order of operations, we're going to do addition or subtraction, then multiplication or division, then exponents. Then I know parentheses aren't in there, but it really is like PEMDAS or MDAS backwards. It's just something that I noticed, um, and many others have noticed as well. Remember, you're always trying to isolate the variable. You want that variable all by itself. You want to know what it is equal to. So let's use these steps, and we'll go back to them with a couple examples. So let's do this example first. This is a typical two-step equation. We have 2x plus 3 equals 15, and we want to solve for x. What is x equal to? Now you can do some guessing and checking, but it's not guessing and checking is not the best way to do it. It's not the easiest way to do it, especially when things get more challenging. Um, we're kind of building up so we can do the more complex problems. So we're going to look at these steps. And the reason I had these separated is because distributive property and like terms, we don't have any of those. Like on the left side, you can't distribute. There's no, not even any parentheses. There's no like terms. These are not alike. And obviously, this there's nothing else alike over on the right side because there's only one number on the right side. So we're going to skip those two, and we're going to go on to step three. Is there any addition or subtraction that we can undo? And I see addition. So the inverse operation of addition is subtraction. We're going to sub do subtraction from that to get rid of that plus three. So it's not even there. But remember, what you do to one side, you must do to the other. So we're going to do that to the other side of our equation. And if it helps to divide the two sides, you can divide it right by that equal sign. So now what's left on the left side is just 2x. Take down that equal sign with it. And 15 minus 3 is 12. All right? Check. Got rid of the addition or subtraction. Now undo any multiplication or division. So 2x, that's multiplication, and how you undo multiplication is with division. Or multiplying by the reciprocal. We're going to use division. Divide it by that number, 2, because 2 over 2 is just 1. And 1x is just like x. So x is by itself then. But what you do to one side, you must do to the other. So 12 divided by 2 is 6. Check. Now really, we're, since it's only two steps, those are going to be the two steps we're working with. There are no exponents. And x is all by itself. We have isolated x, and we know that x is equal to 6. Remember, step six, and I could add this to here, is to check. Check your solution. How do you check your solution? Well, plug, plug in six for x. You can either do it on paper, you can do it in your head and see if it works out. I'm going to do it in my head. Two times six 
is 12, and if you had 3, 12 plus 3, that is equal to 15. So that is a good thing. That's how you can easily check your answer. So that's a two-step equation. Let's do another example. Um, oh, we have the x term on the right side, and there's some division. So 5 is equal to x over 2, which is x divided by 2, minus 3. So we're not doing any distributing or combining like terms, so we're going to skip to step 3 here of our steps. Undo addition or subtraction first. There is subtraction on the side of the variable. So we're going to do the opposite by adding 3 to get rid of that. Again, I'll divide this up. But we're going to add 3 on this side as well to keep it balanced. That's 8. This side, all you have left is x over 2. So 8 is equal to x over 2. Now it's a one-step equation. Let's get rid of our multiplication and division. This is division, so you undo it with multiplication. Now there's one, two on top, one on the bottom. Cancel that out. Now we multiply over here as well. Two times eight is sixteen. So x is equal to sixteen is equal to x, or x is equal to sixteen. And again, you can check this by plugging in. I'm going to do this in my head again. What is sixteen divided by two? Well, it's eight. And then 8 minus 3 is equal to 5, so that would work. And that's your basic two-step equation. Now, there is one exception to the rule that we just gave you. An exception is in a problem like this. So I'm going to read this, but we'll show you this the example. When one side of an equation is a fraction with more than one term in the numerator, that means there's more than one thing at the top, you can still undo division by multiplying each side of the denominator. So this is where you don't really follow those those rules. This is all one big fraction right now. And I want to rewrite it here. x minus 7 over 3 equals negative 12. How you undo a fraction, how you undo this division, multiply by the denominator. Multiply this side by 3 to cancel it out. And what you do to that side, whoops, you must do to this side. Let's say this side by 3. All right, what is left is x minus 7 on the left side, and whatever negative 12 times 3 is, and I believe it's negative 36. So it is a little bit backwards. You're going to do undo the multiplication or division first if the whole one side is a division problem. And now x minus 7, now we can get this, do this one-step equation, and we can add 7. To get rid of that, add 7 to both sides. x equals negative 36 plus 7 is actually negative 29. And there's your answer. And you can certainly go ahead and check that again by plugging in. So it's negative 29 minus 7 all divided by 3. Is that going to be equal to negative 12? Well, negative 29 minus 7 is negative 36 over 3 does equal negative 12. Plug it into your calculator, you can check it that way, but we are good to go. All right, I'm going to leave you with this problem, a good word problem. It says community service, you're making a bulletin board to advertise community service opportunities in your town. You plan to use a half sheet of construction paper for each ad. You need five sheets of construction paper for a title banner. And you have 18 sheets of construction paper total. So when you think see that, you should always say equals 18. How many ads can you make? Why don't you pause it for a second and see if you can write the equation first and then solve it. I'm going to write the equation as well. All right, so what we're saying here is you need one half a sheet. We're trying to figure out how many ads. So we're going to say um, x is equal to the number of ads. So that's what we're trying to figure out. All right. Um, you use one half a sheet per ad. So one half of sheet per ad. Um, and we know we need five sheets for the title banner because that's part of the bulletin board as well. So we need five sheets no matter what, plus one half per ad. And it's got to be equal to a total of 18 sheets because we don't have any more than that. So how many ads can we make? Let's just solve for x. See if this makes sense too. Um, when you when you tend to work it out, it helps you figure out if it makes sense. So subtract five from both sides. 
That's the addition or subtraction first. One half x is left on this side, equal to 13. Now, you can divide both sides by one half, but that's the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So I'm just going to multiply by the reciprocal. I know you've learned this. Dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. And that does cancel these out. So you just have x left over here. And then you have to multiply this one by the reciprocal as well, by 2 or 2 over 1. And you get 13 times 2 is 26. It means you can make 26 adds. And let's think about this. See if it makes sense. It says you can a half a sheet for each add. So if you have a half a sheet for each add, and there's 26 add, that would make 13 sheets of paper. To make 26 ads, plus the 5 for the title banner makes 18 total. And that's what we have. So our equation works out. So that's using an equation as a model for this situation. So let's just revisit our goal, our learning target. And it's to solve two steps, two step equations in one variable. And I always like to take it a step further and to be able to utilize it in a real world situation. And we certainly did there. And those aren't always the easiest to do. So that's why the more you practice, the more you trial and error, the better you get at it. But that's two-step equations in a nutshell. I hope you learned something from this one. Um, it's always a great day to learn math. So have a great rest of your day.